Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to continue on with our S400 testing. We have the 07 on the dyno. It is still snowing like hell. Chuck is filthy. I don't really care. We have our 472 SXE on. Been driving it, to be fair, about a couple of days. We're trying, I don't want to say rush through it, but I kind of know what a 72 and a 76 feel like, so I don't really need to drive it a ton to give you guys good feedback. Again, not the best for towing heavy loads, but it can be done, especially if you have a full manual valve body or at least an automatic, so you're not losing all that boost in between gears. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, again, this is a DDP set of 100% overs, a 12 mil CP3, an AirDog 200, a genuine Borg Warner 472 SXE 87.90 T4 Steed Speed with a fleece downpipe and a homemade intake. We have a built 48 RE all in house here. We had Meyer help us out a thousand horsepower, all billet shaft, triple disc converter, full manual valve body, which means we have a shifter in the cab. Um, just kind of going off of flow maps on a Borg Warner, this charger, the, the 467.7 did about 770. I'm hoping this one does about 850. We might even see 875. I'll kind of show you guys in the book real quick of how we guesstimate that um, kind of stuff that I've been taught over the years on how to take pounds per minute and calculate a horsepower achievable with 12 valves and 24 valves. So we'll go ahead. We got her strapped down on the dyno. Moment of truth. We'll see what she does. All right. So this is the Borg Warner catalog. This is available to anybody. <clears throat> As you guys can see here, this is the pounds per minute. This flows about 90 pounds per minute. And basically on a common rail, we estimate around eight to eight and a half horsepower per pound of air moved. Going over to here, we have 90 pounds of air per minute times eight. That puts us at 720. We did 770. So we'll go ahead 90 times 8.5, 8 765. So that's a pretty accurate number. So what we're gonna do is interpolate that to this 472 to kind of predict a horsepower outcome. Here it is on the flow map. This is the 72. And if you're ever confused, Borg Warner just multiplies their pounds per minute times 10 to get the max horsepower. So 110 pounds per minute. We have 110 times 8.5. So 935, and then we have 110 times times 8, 880. So kind of in that high 800s, which is what we thought. So we'll go ahead and see what she does on the dyno. Again, this is a catalog. I think anybody can order these. I don't think you have to be like anything special to get these uh, for you. And they're great references, especially if you're trying to figure out housings, flow maps, stuff like that. These are amazing resources. All right, so we got the dyno all loaded up. We're going to start at the same 2200 that we did. No extra trailer weight or road grade. And we will run this test. I basically just watched the horsepower, and that's when I let out. And this has auto stop, which is a really nice feature. So we'll go ahead, get this thing running.
right guys, so what we did, I ran it on the same tune three that we maxed out the 467.7 on. Um, so there was a little bit of fuel left on the table. We hit about 42 pounds of boost. So I do think we can go ahead and grab the next tune up, 832. So we already picked up about 60 horsepower. Um, I think tune four will probably end up maxing this out. Um, so I'm really excited. Picking up horsepower is always a cool thing, especially with just changing out the turbos. You guys did hear it labor a little bit more coming through the window, and I'll get out. If you guys look, well, if you guys look over here, what you see is this turbo really did not want to come in till around 24, 2600. It made peak power all the way at 3100 RPM, which is down here. Go down a little bit, Chef. And then it made peak torque right around 2800. When Meyer and I were talking off camera, I said it'd be about 3000 and 2600 off my memory. Hold on, let me shut this off real quick. Just going off my memory, I have done all this testing in 2016 with my 06 Mega Cab. So I'm pretty familiar with these numbers. Um, being at high elevation, it does kind of skew things further over to the right. So definitely a big um, change there. And what we're gonna do, if you come over here, Shad, what you guys can see is this is actually the, not this run, let's see here. So this is the, All right, so this is the 770 horsepower pull of our 467.7. And what you guys can see, it made peak torque about 400 RPM earlier and peak horsepower again, about 400 RPM earlier. And that's what I mean about trying to tow with this charger. It's kind of hard. I tried to come into the ramp the same way, but this really kind of shows you guys just how much slower a 472 comes in. And if you look at this over time, you could see how long the 476 i had to wait about a second the 472 honestly i kind of thought something might have been wrong at it for a minute there it took about five seconds to come to full tilt which you would expect again this is a 5.9 with 300,000 miles on it um and we do have quite a bit of blow by uh so i i do think this engine is kind of showing its age um all in all pretty impressed with it we're gonna go ahead let the truck cool off and we're gonna tune it up to tune four. Um, I think tune four will probably end up maxing this turbo out. I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping we can get to that 850, 880 range. Again, with how tired this engine is, I don't know if we'll get into that 900 range like our mass says, but I've been wrong before, so we'll see what she does. Gonna go ahead and let her cool off and then run it again on tune four. I believe that's 2400 US. This tune, I believe, was 2,000, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, again, just really impressed. Cool data to look at, especially on the graph, showing you guys how much longer this turbo takes to spool. All right guys, so I think we're fighting a little bit of the load. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Shad raise the start point to 2400 on the run. That's when the simulated load comes in. I think we're almost kind of snuffing the turbocharger as it's coming through the test window. So that's something that we're gonna try and see if we can get a better number. Um, that pull, the engine got to 226 degrees, which is way hotter than normal. And you guys could see that, that window took forever to finally light up. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the window.
<laughs> you hear that sweet turbo surge? It does not like that 3 4 lock shit. All right, guys, so we did a few dyno poles. I think the engine was just heat soaked. So what we did was we let it cool off. Um, looking at the data that I showed on some of the videos, we're making like 50 pounds of boost. I don't know how much more this turbo has to give. Um, so we might come up a little short. I'll kind of show you guys some of the blow by puddles that have happened under this truck, dynoing it tonight. Um, so I, I do think this engine's kind of, again, showing its age. Uh, we did pick up about 62 horsepower, which is pretty awesome, with just a turbo change. Um, we'll send some logs to James, see if there's anything there, um, and we'll give it one last shot. Again, we're not going to change anything with the load. Just let it do its thing and see if Tune 4 picks up any more power. We're going to try one more pull on Tune 4. The truck is nice and cooled off. That is all she wants to do, 818. As you can see, I have our first run where we did uh, 832 horsepower and our second run that we did, or our last run that we did like 800 something. You guys could see they're very similar. It's just kind of cool to be able to see the difference between adding fuel and taking away fuel. I think what's happening is we're kind of snuffing the charger. Uh, what I imagine is a tune-up in between these two might yield us a little bit better number. But basically what we have is about 830, 820 horsepower truck. Um, it's making power much higher in the RPM. It's making torque much later in the RPM as well. So that kind of corresponds to with how it drives on the street. As you guys saw in this video, not everything always goes according to plan. Came up a little bit short on what I thought the horsepower was going to be. We still picked up about 62 horsepower over a um, 467.7, which is always a good sign. I, you know, we'll see what a 476 will do. Maybe we'll get into that 900 horsepower mark. Um, but it's always kind of cool to see those graphs overlaid over each other and kind of get a feel for how trucks respond. I do know five nines, big singles, it's kind of a diminishing return over time. Um, the bigger they get, they don't always want to make a lot more power. They just don't have a lot of turbine drive like a 6.7 does. Um, that's why 6.7s drive so nice with big singles and 5.9s don't, uh, especially at our elevation. Those factors trying to ugh, tend to compound on each other and those gains just get lower and lower and lower. Um, all in all, really happy with how it turned out. The 472 is definitely starting to get on the ragged edge of spooling up well for a daily driver at our elevation on a 5.9. I do think on a sea level truck, it would do better. And on a 6.7, I think it's definitely daily drivable, towable um, without too many negative effects. But as that turbo gets bigger and that horsepower gets higher, you guys keep noticing we're going further and further over, uh, making peak power later, peak torque later. And that corresponds to a turbo lag or a kind of lazy pedal. Um, and that's why, you know, the big single life's not for everybody. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to on how you drive it. Um, it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to on how you load it on a dyno. Uh, even with these injectors being as small as they are, we are able to almost snuff the charger out if we flat foot it. 
so you kind of roll into the throttle on these um and it's just something i love big singles i've driven a ton of them five nine six seven from 467 all the way up to 488s there's a learning curve and the best i can tell you is don't get super frustrated make sure you have a good tune up in it and then just practice 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 until you get it down to where you can drive these trucks smoke free even at high elevation as always guys i hope you enjoyed this content give it a big thumbs up comment if you'd like subscribe to keep following along on this journey guys we are almost at 850 horsepower remember we started at like 270 so it has been a very quick paced journey i'm really anxious to get to that thousand horsepower mark and be able to drive this thing every day and kind of enjoy it so as always guys appreciate you stay tuned for the next one